Welcome back. I finally had the time to edit all my photos and the videos from the Pacific Air Show on the Gold Coast and I had a great time. Now this video is split into two sections. The first section is just photos but if you just want to see videos I'll put the timestamp here. You can just skip to where I show all the videos. I do apologize this video is going to be a bit longer than my normal videos but I thought about doing two videos but I decided just to put it to one but I'm sure you will appreciate the time and effort that I took to take these photos and the video. Before I share some of the photos I want to show you what it looked like from my viewpoint because this video that you just saw was taken with the Nikon Z62 and the 200 to 500. This is what it looked like to my eye. See how small the plane is? Imagine how hard this tried to keep up with a plane that's going that fast. And this is what it looked like at the start of the day. Very overcast. So imagine trying to photograph a small plane like that zooming back and forward and all the way up in the sky and back down again. All in all I had a great day but I learned a lot because taking photos and video with the Nikon Z62 and the 200 to 500 wasn't that easy to do. And before next year's Pacific Air Show I know that one thing I am going to buy is a variable ND filter to put on the 200 to 500 so my aperture doesn't have to go too high and also because I take videos I can keep my shutter speed down to around 1 50th which is the perfect setting or at the most 1 100th. If you're just shooting photos use shutter priority because that is going to be your best setting. Your aperture is going to vary wildly but you're going to be able to control your shutter speed. Why is your shutter speed important? Well I'll show you that in a minute. I went outside a couple of days later and I tested shutter priority and it worked great but when I swapped over to video I found that the camera was set at 1 25th of a second. Now I shoot 25 frames per second so my minimum shutter speed should be 1 50th. I couldn't adjust the shutter speed. Read up on the Nikon website and that is a problem. It is a known fact that your shutter speed is dictated by your frame rate that you're shooting. I was shooting at 25 frames per second which is PAL that it's what it was giving to me. So I wouldn't have been able to use shutter priority for photos and for video. For video I had to increase my shutter speed because it was so bright. Normally for wildlife I shoot in continuous high extended around eight and a half to nine frames per second. While we were just setting up and a plane came through I go like okay well I'm just going to leave it to that. I realized wow eight and a half frames per second yes I'm getting a lot of photos but I'm going to run out of storage. So I set my shutter mode to just continuous high around four and a half frames per second. Now you might say well really I want more frames per second. Take a look at this and you will see that four and a half frames per second is still heaps. So this is half speed right? Look at this. This is full speed. I didn't need every single frame. Here's an example to show you how the metering changed so quickly from being a bit bright to dark to bright again to very dark. Why it goes so dark sometimes? Well the sky is very dark right up the top so I set my settings correctly to shoot straight on but as it went up and I mean it was nearly vertical at some stages the images were underexposed but shooting raw I was able to correct my exposure. This action happens so quickly that all you're doing is just concentrating on the plane and you're just following the plane around. You don't have time to look at your metering you're just saying I'm just following the plane. Now in air show photography you're going to need two different sets of settings for your shutter. If you're photographing propeller driven planes you're going to need a low shutter speed. You can't shoot at 1 500th or 1 1000th because if you do you're not going to get prop blue. When you're photographing propeller driven planes you want that prop blue because you want to show action. You want to show the plane in motion because if you're photographing 1 500th or 1 1000th the jets that that day I was photographing around 1 800th, 1 1000th for a propeller driven plane so it just looks like the plane is just not moving. These biplanes were just zooming along and sometimes they would go vertical and I realized very quickly that if I kept just shooting 
horizontally like this, like in landscape format, that I would have to crop very heavily. I'd have to turn my camera into portrait mode. And then as the planes leveled out, then I'd go back into landscape orientation. The photos I got in portrait orientation were great. And I'm glad that I'd swapped the camera around. When you go to an air show, you've got to think that you're not going to zoom into the planes all the time because you've got to have different types of the different ways that you crop your images. And that's what this video is all about. I want to show you that you don't just stick to one particular way of taking photos. Don't just crop in and show the plane. Sometimes it's good to show the area around the plane, like this photo here. Look, I've got these biplanes coming in, but there were some boats on the other side of the boys where all this show was happening. Look, I've got boats in front here. It gives you a perspective of how low these planes were. It gives your viewer different types of photos and it will make people keep looking at your photos, not just start scrolling, oh, they're all the same. It's great just to show close-ups, but sometimes to zoom out a bit or to crop 6x4 or 8x10 or 16x9, it gives different perspectives. The next that came along was a C-17. This is a very big plane. And here, 16x9, I had to shoot like that. The reason being was it's such a big plane and if I'd taken it 6x4, I'd have a lot of dead space above and below the plane. I really want to focus on the plane. But then when he banked, I stayed cropped at 6x4 because it took up the whole frame. And you'd see I've got different compositions and that's what you want. Now you can see this photo is shot of the back of the plane. Now sometimes it's great to shoot the back of a plane. But photographing the back of a plane a lot of time doesn't work unless there's a real reason that you're photographing the back of a plane. For example, it's an F-18 going away, you'll see the jet wash at the back of the plane. Yep, that's nice to see. But most of the time, photos like this are very hard to make interesting. If you think shooting at 1 200th of a second for propeller-driven planes is hard, try photographing a helicopter, especially a helicopter that's not moving too much, that's just hovering around. Look at this photo. It looks like the blades are near stationary. This was shot at 200th of a second. Now look, can you see that I've got prop blur? This photo here was taken at 160th of a second. I got about 20 photos and only two of them were sharp because holding all this gear was just so hard. And this is now example, 200th of a second of the Westpac helicopter and now down to 150th of a second and we've got prop blur. Now the next set, these were World War II planes doing dog fighting and look at it. This is the shots that you want to get. They're just coming together here and it's just phenomenal watching these. It'd be great just to sit and watch but when you're taking photos you don't have the time to appreciate. Then they're doing all sorts of tricks, they're going inverted, they're flying from left to right. It was great taking these photos and you can see I've got different perspectives. I've got wide, I've zoomed in, I've got photos in 6x4, I've got photos in 16x9. All different ways to capture these planes. And even at 1 250th of a second, you can see I've got prop blur. I would have had more prop blur at 1 1 25th of a second, but like I stated, I could keep the camera still at 1 1 25th of a second. So I settled for what I could get. And that is what you should think about. Think about your limitations. Now on this day we had four stunt pilots. This is Aaron Dalou. He is an amazing stunt pilot. And here you can see some action shots. Now he's diving down. Now he's on his side. He's flying upwards. Look at this. Now he's just coming in, diving down again. You need to show action. When you're photographing planes, you need to show action. And here's Matt Hall. He's just above the waterline. Here I've zoomed in and look, he's waving to the crowd. Now he's inverted. These are all action. You can see like he's coming in, he's on his side. Then he's doing loop to loop with smoke. Four and a half frames a second I found, I got enough photos, look at it. Do you really think that I needed more than four and a half frames per second on that day? I don't think so. I think that four and a half frames a second was heaps. Sure, eight and a half frames a second, I would have got every little rotation, but I would have had thousands and thousands and thousands of photos. 
all up that day I took four and a half thousand photos. Then we had the Australian roulettes come along. Very small, very quick, just like the Red Bull planes. And look at this, if I was in landscape orientation, I would have had to be so wide. And even at 200 mils, I wouldn't have gotten when they'd gone over and then they're back down again. This photo really grabs people's attention. This is what air show photography is all about. And this is the shots that you really want to try to be taking. Then they're just going a separate way. So it's got like going from vertical to horizontal. You're just working all day long and it's tiring, but it's so rewarding. Now look at the difference. They're on their bellies. You can see they're quite dark. Then when they just came back, look at the difference. This is the same shutter speed, the same aperture. Here they're bright and here they're dark because the sun is not reflecting from the underside of the plane. Then it was time for the F-18 and by this time we're getting late in the day. In the distance we could just see this little grey spot and he's doing just below Mach 1. This image I've cropped from a landscape to a portrait and then went vertical and this is captivating to watch when they're just shooting like that. Then he did a couple of fly pass. These jets are phenomenal to photograph. You can see he's got missiles and all that. And here again, I'm trying to get different angles of the plane. He's on his belly and you can see all his armor just looks amazing. Then they start shooting flares out. It was amazing to take photos of this. And I've just got different frames. You can see like how quick this jet is going to how the flares are reacting. This to me is my money shot of the day. I just love this photo. Remember I said taking photos of the back of the plane isn't that interesting. But here, this photo is captivating. Why? Because he's going away and we've got two flares shooting downwards. So it's a very captivating image. Now here is a set when the plane is just going vertical. So all these next photos here were taken in portrait orientation. And here you can see he's inverted and you can see the jet wash, you can see the flare shooting out. Now this is a Yak-110. It is a unique plane, a one of a kind. It is two planes joined together. It is driven by two propeller driven engines plus a jet engine in the center of the plane, all taken at one two hundredth of a second. See, he's just zoomed down and this photo shows you the plane. Look, you can see the two propeller engines, the small jet engine in the center. I've zoomed out a bit and I've cropped a 16 by nine to show you like all that smoke at the back. It gives you a feel of, wow, this would have been fantastic to watch. Then he's doing these spirals and in the video, it just looks amazing. If you thought taking photos with the 200 to 500 on the Z6 II was hard enough with a slow shutter speed, try taking video. I struggled. I took quite a lot of video, but hand holding this, and it's not just when you're panning from left to right, it's when they're going up, because trying to track it was very difficult. And I admit, I'm not the perfect photographer, but you will see, as I'm going up, trying to track the plane up, I'm getting jittering, because I'm zoomed in a bit, and the plane is going so fast, because I'm hand holding, I'm just going like this, I'm just jerking along and you can see that in the video but if i'd had a tripod and a gimbal head i would have had much smoother motion and i wouldn't have had this jerkiness i'm showing you this because this is a fact that you're going to have to realize if you're using this gear so let's enjoy some video now here's aaron delu he's a stunt pilot look at it i'm doing a fairly good job he's just going along then all of a sudden he just drops down and you've got to follow him. You've got to follow that plane. Now he's just coming in. Look how quick he's going. You can see there's a bit of stuttering here. There you go. See that stuttering? That's what I'm talking about. It's just amazing to watch this. Now he's just going to go inverted. You can see I've lost focus a little bit. The Z6 II did a phenomenal job in staying in focus all this because it's continuous AF, but you've got to track that little plane. Now here's some biplane action. Look at this. Just amazing. 
This is why I love the Z6 II. Its video quality is just so good. There you go, see the stuttering? They just climb so quickly. This is why I said, taking photos is great. Even though this video is not perfect, it gives you a sense of motion. Seeing video of seeing what the planes are doing is a totally different perspective. Even though I didn't get a lot of great video, I'm still very happy because I can show people this is the excitement that I was having on the day. Now here's some World War II planes doing their stuff. Tracking small planes like this isn't easy. And don't be filled in trying to zoom in too much because they move so quickly that you've got to stay out. Most of this was shot at around 200 to 250 mils. And I've slightly cropped the images sometimes. Now here's the Osprey. Look at it. Can you see why video is great? Look at it. It's just moving around. Now look, it's actually going from vertical to horizontal. Look, can you see the engines? They're starting to come forward. And this is, that's it, he's going. Now here's the red roulettes. You see how small these planes are? They're just screaming along. I wish I'd had more fit. Now here's Matt Hall in his Red Bull plane. I just couldn't zoom in any closer. He's just moving so quickly. It gives you an idea of what he's able to do. And you can see in the video how quick this is happening. So imagine when I'm trying to follow him and take photos while he's doing this sort of stuff. There's some chittering a little bit again. See what I mean by action? Like, look at this. Photos are great, but when you're seeing this in video, it just, it just blows your mind of what these pilots can do. Here's the F-18 doing its thing. It's just spiraling. This is where the jittering gets very bad. I just couldn't keep up with the F-18. He's just going vertical now. Get ready for the flares. Here they go. Look at this in action. Now he's going inverted. He's coming back down for the run. Trying to keep hold, more flares. It looks like he's just going into a flat spin and they're heading towards the ground. Now here's the Yak 110. Look at it. You can see like he's just climbing, he's climbing, he's climbing, he's going vertical. Then he just rolls over. Look how low to the water he is. He's coming on his side. So you can see, I had a ball. I got heaps of great photos and I got some great video. Was it tiring? It was very tiring. The next day, I just chilled out at home. I didn't even look at the photos. I just downloaded them onto the computer and I just had a rest day because I was totally exhausted. I hope you enjoyed the video like I did. Enjoyed the day. And remember, whether things go good or bad, you have to enjoy yourself. You have to look at the positives and the negatives. And you outweigh the negatives to the positive and say, yeah, okay, I missed that, but I got this. So I still should be satisfied. And this is my viewpoint in life. I don't just look at the negatives. You go, yes, okay, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to make sure I don't make the same mistake again. 
I might again do the same mistake, but I'm going like, okay, I learned so much. I know what I have to prepare for. And I know that the next time I'm going to go out, I've got more knowledge. And that's the beauty of photography. It's practice makes perfect. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or feedback, leave it in the description below. Enjoy photography, no matter what photography you do. And I'll see you next time.